I want to do your will. You've given me a commission. Help me be a light to this world. I'm not here to survive. I'm not here to look out for myself. That has its place, but it's not why I'm here. I'm here to bless. I'm here to shine. I'm here to spread your word. I'm here to be a living ambassador of you. The thing is this. It may be general, the will of God, speaking to everybody, but when you apply it to your life, it becomes specific to your life. It becomes part of the specific will for you that God has. Amen. The general will becomes, so think that, get this again, the general will of God here becomes the specific will of God for your life when you apply it. Right. Example, it says forgive. Okay, general, forgive or you won't be forgiven. General, all right, true to everybody. But then it means, well, how do I apply it? Well, there's somebody in my life. They've got something in my heart. I have not really forgiven this person. I need to forgive them. I need to forgive them specifically. Maybe I need to do something. As I do it, it becomes the specific will of God for my life that will lead to other things. Amen. You understand? It says, for instance, it, says, it works with anything. It says, it says repent. <laughs> Pretty general. But when you take it, it's repent for what you need to repent of. That specific thing. There's a specific thing in your life. You can always have something to repent about. You think, well, if you don't think you have something to repent about, you're already in sin. You've got to repent of that because you're not perfect. That specific, when you repent and do that, it becomes specific action, specific will for your life, and God will use that to get you to the next point. I'll tell you one more about it. It says, go and make disciples of all nations. Well, that's for everybody, Yes. But when you apply it specifically, something specific is going to happen in your life. Whether they reject you or receive, it doesn't matter. When you step out and you give the word to that person, I'm following God's will, something, it's going to speed up, it's going to expedite what God has for your will because you're in his will. Specifically. So the, spe the general will here leads to the specific will for your life when you apply it. And the known, the revealed will of God in here is going to lead you to what is not yet revealed for your life. The scripture says, don't be like the mule or the horse. Psalm 32 verse 9. Don't be, why? Well, the horse will jump ahead of you. You got to pull it back, rein it in, pull it back. You don't want to jump ahead of God. You want something, you may want something with the heart. You got to say, Lord, I'm surrendered to you. Like Abraham and Sarah, they were like the horse. They jumped ahead. They wanted what God promised. Good, but they wanted it now. And what happened? They got Ishmael. God bless Ishmael, but it's been a lot of problems for the Jewish people in the Middle East, both Israel and Isaac. Don't be like the mule, it says. The mule has the opposite problem. It tends to not want to go forward. You got to pull it. Don't be like, meaning when God says go, don't, don't talk about it. Don't say tomorrow. Don't say uh, maybe. Don't say, yeah, I'd like to. Just do it. See, 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 don't delay it. Don't fight it. Just do it. Here in the book of Acts, they may have had all sorts of reasons to go into Asia. Yet God said, with all your reasons, still I'm saying no. Why? Could have been a danger waiting. Could have been, could have been the death of Paul. Could have been, could have, they could have stumbled because of something there. They could have been distracted or maybe God had something else waiting for them somewhere else, which he did. Or it could have derailed God's plan in some way. I mean, God will always know how to, but it could have, it could have not been the perfect thing. God knows everybody who's going to get saved. So, and it happened through what they did back then. They touch, that's the beginning of the tree. They touch one thing, it starts multiplying up to today when you're saved. If you turn left, it's going to affect history. Turn right, it's going to affect history. The one thing they do it could change the history of the world. Actually, what's going to be cause of them not going there, they're going to listen to God. They're going to end up, it's going to mean the first person of Europe is going to come to salvation. That's going to change the history of the world. But they will go back to Asia. But that you, can, you, know, you can be caught up so much in something that you're not yielding to God. Be careful when you want something so much because it can color your perception. Lord, even if you say, hey, Lord, give me a sign, and then you'll take anything. You know, I don't say you will, but if you're so invested in it, that's a problem. Somebody says, oh, you know, you know, I got a, you know God told me, I'm so, I'm, or I know I'm supposed to marry that person. Give me a sign, Lord. If I say hi and they say hi back, you did it. <laughs> and speaking, so, you know, you, you got to treat it like Isaac. If you want to hear God's will, I, Lord, with or without, I'm okay. I, I want this, but thy will be done. Then he can lead you. 
In the old days when I was a single pastor, there'd be women who would say, it's God's will I, that, that you marry me. I said, okay. Just one thing, one little issue. I said, well, they said what? Well, God didn't tell me that. <laughs> to which they replied, you're disobeying the will of God. I said, but don't you think he'd let me know? Are you telling me you don't feel anything? If you told me that, all right, I'd accept it. I said, okay, I don't feel anything. You're not being clear. <laughs> Read my lips. I don't feel it. You're not submitting to the will of God. You know, I'm using this, it's a composite, but everything I just said is true. Maybe you were to be married or you wanted to be married. A relationship didn't, didn't, didn't happen. And you think you failed to get married. No, you didn't. You succeeded in not getting married to that person. I was once in a friendship with a woman that I had helped lead to the Lord early in, in, the, in my walk. And it was becoming more than a friendship. And the feelings were becoming stronger. And it wasn't that there was anything unbiblical about it. But I didn't have it from God that it was His will. The feelings were there and things were moving. And I'm ministering in the city to the homeless. I believe it was in Penn Station. And a homeless man, bearded homeless man, as we're ministering, turns to me and says to him about himself, I used to be a minister, but I turned away from God. You're considering something that's not the will of God, and I am Balaam's donkey telling you stop. I said, whoa. That was it. A guy coming up from nowhere in Penn Station telling me he's Balaam's donkey. That was enough. <laughs> Years ago, uh, at one point, of the, I was engaged to be married, but it wasn't God. And I mean, it was all nothing unbiblical. Just, and, and, you know, and we went our ways and she got married and this. And, and we met again years later and she always wondered about it and all that. And she told me, she said, you know, if we'd gotten married, I would have ruined your ministry. I says, I was not ready at all. And we thank God. It was beautiful. Thank God. So in your life, that person you thought you were supposed to marry and you're crying out, why, Lord, why not? It didn't happen. Why, why? And you see the people years later and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the no's. Paul was only saved because he, was, he yielded to God. You know his name, Paul, comes from the root pao, which means to pause. Or we get the word pause, stop, repent. Who knows what the no is saying in your life, but if God's saying it, don't fight him. Don't fight him. We were in Cuba, and we had a translator then named Felix, and he, he had come from Cuba, I mean, as a kid, I mean, he was taken out early. I didn't realize that when, he, when I asked him to come. And he was arranging, and it was his last day, he had to leave. And he was arranging, because we were in the region of where he, he grew up, or where, where he was born. And he, was, and he, he said there's a church in, in the town, and he, arranged, he called them up, and he wanted to do it. He's all dressed up to do it. And they, they, the people on the mission who were arranging said, we can't do it, sorry. He was heartbroken. God said no. Said they'd take us to a plantation to minister on a farm. I see him. I look back and he's in a daze. They were taking him around. He's in a daze. I said, What's, what is it? He said, this plantation is my grandfather's farm. This is the place. Not just the town. The place. God, because in other words, God said no to what he wanted and then took him to the exact place. Not the town. The exact place. And that night, I'm preaching the message. The, uh, he's translating the first, which I had planned already. The first words were, and everyone shall return to the land of his father. Amen. God says no. Now they don't know what to do. And then it happens. Ne verse 9 now. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. He's led by a vision. Now, he didn't understand why God said no, and now it's going to come. Even if you have everything figured out and it makes sense, still you got to ask God. He may know something you don't know which he probably does. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. That doesn't mean don't re use reason. Yes, use reason. Do your best, but always lift it up to God. And major times, when you look at the early church, how it was led supernaturally. Pentecost, miracles, vision of Peter, of the unclean animals, Cornelius praying, all these things, Antioch, prophetic word to Paul and Barnabas. It's happened with us major times. The major things have happened. God has shown us. 
I needed God's intervention or I asked that Lord, you know, give me a, like when I was coming into ministry or when I was asked to come into ministry full time, I said, Lord, I know, you know, I know I'm not, they, they tell me I'm not supposed to ask for fleeces or signs, but I don't, I'm going to ask you, for, I'm not going to ask you for one, I'm going to ask you for six of them. Give me six, these six things and do it by the end of the month. At the end of the month, he did every single thing I asked. Now I'm not saying he's going to always do that, but he did. To get our own place, God sends a man out of our first place, out of nowhere, and he comes up to me, an American Indian, living in a trailer, says, God told me you're the one. I didn't know what that meant. And he says, he gives me a check for $150,000 to get our first building. To get our next building, God led us to circle it like Joshua seven times. It was ridiculous. 12 o'clock at night, next morning, we get the building. This building, word after word after miracle after miracle, fight after fight, and then he gives it to us. When we went to Cuba on missions, there were people, we met up with people who kept saying, we, dream, we knew you were coming, we dreamed it, we saw you, we saw you people, we had a word. I had a dream once, I was in China, and a Bible was in a, man, was, was in a man's hand and it was burning on his hand. And I was afraid it was going to burn his hand. And I hear the words, I said, this is to, for the redemption of the sufferings of the persecuted church. In my, in my, my dream. I wake up, and there's a fax from a brother who said he'd just been reading the night before the story of China of the persecuted church and their burning Bibles. And one reached his hand in and grabbed a page or grabbed a Bible, took on page, and that's what they went on. It was the beginning of God saying, go to China. Go to China, which I did. You see, another key, that's another key to find God's will for your life. What is God's will for your life? Well, one thing that we cannot keep out of it. I don't care who you are, what your job is, is that he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. That is God's charge to us. To, uh, not to ministers, to everybody, or you are a minister if you're born again. And that tells you something, that in some way, so it doesn't matter whether you can go on a mission or whether you're spreading the word here, whether you're ministering here, you are called by God to minister for him, to minister, somehow get the word out. And the more you do it, the more God's will will be fulfilled in your life. I remember Rogerio, man from Brazil, who had this gift, and he said, I see you, you're ministering uh, in Africa, because he says, I saw multitudes of dark faces, and it was, I believe it was Africa, and you're ministering to them. And God you know, God, you know, God had, was calling me to Africa, and I was kind of delaying it because I wanted like a sign, even though he said that. And I finally said, okay, Lord, I know, you know, I said, and that day I get something in the mail. Somebody sends me from Africa and, and a garment, an African garment, and I'm to go. And I go, and that thing that he saw, we saw literally two million faces in that gathering. Hallelujah. But God's Spirit, we had to be open. God will lead you. And the more you follow, the more you're going to get led with more. If you're not following, you're still in the first step. Why should he, why should he, you know, if someone's not listening to you, you're not going to, but if you go, Lord, just show me. What do you want me to do? He'll, he'll lead you. There's nothing like being in the center of God's will. Nothing like it. Paul, he always sought that. If he stayed, he could have stayed back. If he did, we never would have had all this. At least not through him. So he sees a vision of a man in Macedonia saying, come, come. It's pretty clear. Come. Now, so it wasn't there, but now God gives them the there. Come, this is what I had. If they had not listened to God, they'd be too busy, most likely, to, to switch at that moment. I want to tell you one more, that, uh, that I was, I, we were about to minister to the homeless in New York City, and the night before, I have a dream. And I, the dream I have is I'm going to, we're going to Grand Central Station in New York City, and on the benches are homeless people. And, and, and I'm talking to one of them. It was like a soul. I'm talking to a soul. And, 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 and I share the gospel. And then the, 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 the soul follows me and says, take me with you. Take me out of here. Take me out of here. And I'm saying, I would, but our, our car is not enough. We're not enough. We're, but, and then I'm, then I'm driving away, and the car starts expanding. And I, but I look in the rear view mirror, and I see this soul getting like taken back in like by demonic beings. And so I said, okay. So we go in there. I said, Lord, I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but we go there. At the end of the day, we end up in Grand Central Station. It wasn't me planning it. And I'm talking. Everybody's talking. I'm sharing with, the, with somebody, and I share, the, I share the gospel with them. And the, word, the person totally opened the gospel. And the person had a problem with alcohol. And I'm leaving, and the person says, can you take me with me? Can you take me with you? Can you take me with you? 
And I'm like, at the moment, the dream comes. I said, okay, I'm not leaving you. I'm so I waited till everybody was finished. And we took him. We walked around until we could find a Christian place. And there was nothing open. Finally, as we're going, we're, we couldn't find it. We passed somebody who recognized us. And he said, he was going to a meeting. He said, what is it? He says, no, I'm a Christian, but I was an alcoholic. And we're going to a Christian meeting. And said, can you take him? And they did. God wants to lead you. God wants to lead you. After Paul saw that vision, he says, immediately they headed out to there, to Macedonia. The key, when you know God's will, I mean, when God's will says something, God says, do this, do it. Don't put it off. You know, you get, you get a bad impulse, you're afraid, you're angry, hold off. Don't do anything. Don't say anything, you're going to get in trouble, you're going to regret it. Hold off on the bad thing, on the fear, don't act on it. But God speaks to you here, speaks to you anywhere you're reading the Bible, go with it in some way. Go, be quick to follow God. Most, most of the most successful people are those God says it, you go. So when God said no to them, he had something better. He had something, if they had not gone with a no, if they didn't yield, they wouldn't have seen it. So it's okay. God has said, Lord, I know this is a no, but I know, I believe that you have something better for me and whatever it is, it's going to be better. And I'm okay with that. And I thank you for that. Even though I don't see it yet, I thank you because you will thank him. And you'll never know his best unless you, you, unless you accept it when he says, this is not my best. And, once, and if you lost something in the past, don't be spending your life dwelling on it. It doesn't matter. It's over. It's gone. God has something better than what you lost. You know, it said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Forget what was there. Don't get wrapped up in that thing you have to have. Get wrapped up in God. Because that thing is gone now and God is now. God is out of the tomb. Follow God out of the tomb. Move forward in God no matter what. Move forward. One way closes. Okay, that's all right. Keep going. Paul kept going. God kept going. And notice one other last thing as we bring this home. Paul is hearing the voice of the lost in that vision. He's seeing a, a man who's calling out, basically, save me. Save me. Now, we don't know if there was a man but a man, if they're not, if they're lost, most of them don't know it. But that's the voice. Paul is hearing the voice of the lost. A brother on a mission to India came back here and brought me a gift. Some people in India had made a, a garment for me, an Indian garment, or a actually a special kind of garment, not just regular, and a cassette back then. And I listen, I put it in, and I listen, and it says, Jonathan, it says, we need you to come here. Come to India. Come. And you must give us the word. Come, come. I mean, it was, like, it was like as much, come to our land. We need you. Come. Well, and I look in a, in a magazine, like right after that, and at Richard Wormbrad, who I've spoken about, who was in prison for his faith, and he's wearing the same exact garment. Wow. The voice of a man calling from across the world. The voice of the lost is calling from around the world, saying, save me, save us. The Macedonians, they save us. They're all over the world. They're in Af Africa, Asia, Europe, Middle East, China. Say they're in your town. They're in your workplace. They're, they're spirits. They might be in your family. They're calling. They might not know it. They don't say it, but in their deepness, the deepness of their soul, it's calling, save me. You might be arguing with them, but in the deepness of the soul, it's saying, save me. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let us perish. Come, save us is what they're saying. Don't take no for an answer. They're waiting. God knows the plans he has for your life. They're good plans. They're blessed plans. But to fulfill them, you got to seek his will. And you got to walk in righteousness. You got it's okay. He'll give you the power, but you got to do it his way. Only way that works. And uh, and and goodness and love and it begins by saying, "Lord, I want to do your will. You've given me a commission. Help me be a light to this world. I'm not here to survive. I'm not here to look out for myself. That has its place, but it's not why I'm here. I'm here to bless. I'm here to shine. I'm here to spread your word. I'm here to be a living ambassador of you. I have the I'm to be like a, 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 a agent of heaven on earth. Lord, help me to reach out and spread the word. Do his will. This week, God's good. As you do his will, seek his will, he's going to lead you into the fulfillment of your calling. Do His will. Be His messenger. Share His word. Don't be afraid. The love of God. Share it here. Share it everywhere. They're calling you. Answer the call and save the Macedonian.
Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.